WTL, that's Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Class, and joined by Jabron. Oh, the parlay pounder. <laughs> you got it, we're back. Yes, we are, and we talked a lot of baseball last week. Yeah. We're going to get back into football. For sure, we have to. And I, I know you're wearing some Twins gear there, yeah, but Wednesday yeah. night just didn't go your way. It didn't. Baseball season's over. Nobody has to watch yeah. anymore. The Twins are out of it. Who cares? We're on to Super Bowl season. Pump the, pump, <laughs> pump the brakes. Yep, we're on, yeah, we're we're looking ahead more. You know, we're going to take this bye week, this Husker bye week, and yeah. we're really going to hone in on football. And yeah, now that the twins are out, who's even watching? Who nobody is. Not in this part of the world, anyway. So nope. It, it was a, it was a fun season for the twins, but it all has to come to an end. Glad we won a playoff series, but that's as far as it went. All right, so let's start with a hot Thursday night game yeah. that a lot of folks are going to be on. Uh, that is. The Denver Broncos are heading on over to Arrowhead Stadium. That's a 7:15 kickoff on Amazon. We're streaming here. Yep. And man, Denver, you are a 10 and a half <laughs> point dog here. Yeah, Andy, uh, double digit <laughs> with a short week in the possibility of Travis Kelsey not playing. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's ideal for the Chiefs, right? But, however, mm. the Broncos have had zero success against the Chiefs over the last several years, 0-15 yeah. straight up in the last 15 uh, games against them. Yes. And they entered this game ranked dead last in total defense, rush defense, and scoring defense. Yeah, that's pretty – I mean, and then you're going up against the juggernaut that is Kansas City. <laughs> I mean, yes. Divisional game. E- exactly. And, yes, those numbers are a little inflated from that game against the Dolphins when they put 70 points up, but they also just allowed more than 400 yards to the Jets in backup Zach Wilson. Yeah. So, uh, Kelsey or no Kelsey, the Chiefs should have their way in this game. It, it's the Chiefs or a, or a straight pass for me. So, if if I'm going to lean away, I'm going 10.5 with the Chiefs in a total blowout game. Yeah. And if that's happening, you got to look at Patrick Mahomes over on yards as well. Yeah. And that over under, the total sent at 47. And here's a couple of things here. Yeah. That total has gone over nine of the last 10 games. <laughs> and that's just in Denver's games. For sure. Because uh, Denver can't stop anybody. It's a putrid defense. They are freaking terrible. It's what it is, Andy. And they just cannot stop anybody. And the sports books can't catch up to this. No. They, the, the Broncos are 0 5 and 1 their last 6 games against the spread. Like yeah. you can you can only bring a total down so much. You you can only inflate that you know, the point spread to 10 and a half, 11, 12 points. This is the NFL. It's like, pro football. Yeah, yeah you, you can't do it more than that. Uh, but yeah, give me the Chiefs here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think give me the Chiefs. And like I was talking about Patrick Mahomes, Andy, it's a over under 295 yards. Mm. I believe if they're going to cover this spread, he has to have 300 yards passing. I believe that they open it up against yep. him. Even without Travis Kelsey, I do think he's going to play. But even without him, yeah. I still think he can get to that number with those speedy guys like Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney, uh, yeah. and Isaiah Pacheco out of the background uh, backfield. So I really believe that over 295 is a lock for Mahomes. Well, and that's the uh, I, I like that. I really do. Um, but I was looking at Pacheco. Mm-hmm. Pacheco. Uh, over 74 and a half yards rushing was the there latest I, I saw. Um, he's going to get that. He should. Uh, he's one of the leading rushers. I think he's like six or 13th <clears throat> in the league. Like, yeah. It's just kind of a sneaky stat there uh, with Pacheco because um, you're you're thinking, oh, this is an <clears throat> offense that likes to throw the ball around. This No, Andy Reid really likes to pound the rock. Yeah, he, he does, Andy, especially if they get up by over two touchdowns or, yeah. you know, three touchdowns. They are going to get Pacheco the ball. Over 75 and a half yards rushing, I believe that is very attainable for Isaiah. So I like those two player props that we just laid out there. Yeah, yeah. So he's the 13th leading rusher in the league. Already has 325 yards on the season. Yeah. Um, he's not short on carries either. 71 carries with a 4.6 yard average. Yeah. If he just does his average, he's going to sail over that player prop there. Yeah. No sweat. Should Nothing be a lock. It. Should be a lock, Andy. All righty. Let's move on to the uh, Sunday morning game. Yeah. Here. Uh, kind of an odd time here, but we're used to it now, right? Yeah. 8.30 kickoff over in London. It's going to be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Tennessee Titans. And the <clears throat> Titans are a four-point dog. Yeah, Andy. Um, 
I'm going to stay with uh, Baltimore, even though they kind of let me down last mm. week. Both teams are in need of a bounce-back effort here, and maybe a change of scenery will do the trick. The Ravens okay. were in control against the Steelers on Sunday until the fourth Should've. quarter and ended up with 335 total yards, 210 passing. Yeah, Baltimore coughed up the ball three times and went a rough 5 of 14 on third down. Can't so do you cannot do that, especially against a good defensive team like the Steelers. They are going to pounce on that and you know get the ball turned over. So I, I really think that Lamar Jackson and company kind of gets it going here in London against Tennessee. I, I, I just believe they have the playmakers to do it, and I think they, they walk around. Walk out of here with a touchdown victory over the Titans. They should be able to get over there and prevail and win. The the key is yeah. can they win by more in a field goal? That over under is at forty and a half. Yeah. currently it's still sitting there at uh, forty and a half. Yeah. Um, every metric that I've looked at, whether I'm looking at Baltimore, Tennessee, last ten games, last five games, home away, <laughs> they're both an under team. They are huge on the under yeah. here, but this is only forty and a half. This is so low because of that stat you were just putting out there, Andy. I mean, 40 points in, you know, kind of a, yeah. I don't want to say a primetime game, but everybody will be watching this right. game. Yep. I think yep. they're going to really want to shine Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. So I do believe that there are going to be points scored in this game. If I had to lean away, it's the over. It's the over. Okay. Well, it has to. Something has to happen sometime. S- something has to happen sometime. <laughs> what about this player prop I'm looking at here? <clears throat> uh, Lamar Jackson, two hundred and twenty-two and a half yards, uh, total yards. Total so yards. Total yards. Okay. Now, now he's been averaging about two hundred and six. Yeah. Um, so you're thinking he's going to go over? Can he get there? You know, I, I, I don't know. I have mixed emotions about this because. You know, Tennessee likes to keep games close. Yeah, they do, Andy. Uh, I, I do think this is an over for the for that stat, Andy, just because I think he's going to light it up on the ground, and that's going to open up his passing game along uh, mm. with Mark Andrews. And that is my player prop that I'm going with is Mark Andrews. Anytime touchdown score is wow. at a plus 160 right yeah. now. I yeah. believe they find him in the red zone, get that guy back to where he needs to be in the end zone. So I really like that. I like yours as well, though, with Lamar going over on those yards rushing and passing together yeah yeah you get a you get a kind of double dip there and utilize his legs and, yeah and, and you know it just takes a couple of passes he's kind of a boomer bust passer just a couple of big plays here and there yep you got it it really is and another one that i want to point out to people if you are on the titans train derrick henry anytime touchdown scores at a plus mm-hmm. 100 so you're still getting plus money for a guy that's going to be there at the goal line yeah and you know most of the anybody in london that has a titans jersey on yeah. will be number 22 so uh <laughs> I, I I believe that they are going to want Lamar and uh, Derrick Henry in the end zone over there in London. So I believe that those are two good player props. All right, and once again, that's an eight thirty a.m. kickoff yeah. on the NFL Network to get your Sunday kick started. Let's go! All right, let's move on to a noon kickoff over on <laughs> Fox. Oh, my God. My Chicago Bears are playing host Duh, to the— Duh, Bears. <laughs> Duh, Bears. Uh, to the 1-4 and four Vikings. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are kind of staying on their soapbox here saying, see, I told you, see, I told you the Vikings <laughs> weren't going to be that good. We all know the Bears weren't going to be that good. Uh, the short-term memory is making everyone think the Bears are going to do something here. They're still a home dog, two and a half. Yeah, Andy. Uh, the real big thing about this, Andy, is that does Minnesota take the— Foot off the gas and tank. Is is that what everybody's thinking right now? Justin Jefferson probably, he, he is on IR now. He will not be playing in this game. Mm. That is a huge kick to this Minnesota yeah. Vikings offense. Yeah. Now they've got to upgrade Jordan Addison, K.J. Osborne to that one-two punch. Uh, uh. You know, probably a lot more T.J. Hawkinson into that passing game. Yeah. I, I just really think this is a sneaky one that the Bears can, you know, go two for two here and at least keep the game close. I do believe that Minnesota probably will win this game at the end Mm. just because they're the more, you know, I just think they're the more built team even missing Justin Jefferson. So I have to back the Vikings, but it's a scary place if you're the Vikings missing Justin Jefferson. It's really scary because Osborne, I don't know if there's a more frustrating receiver in the league. I've watched a few of their games, yeah. and, man, he drops balls. Yeah. He drops a lot of balls, and, and then it all comes back to Kirk Cousins. Like, see, see, clutch moments. Only yeah. went 2-7 on that drive. 
Well, Osborne had two drops. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, it, he put it rough. on him, put it on him each time or whatever. And, and a lot of stuff happened at the end of that Chiefs game. They were in contention <laughs> with the best team in the world, yeah. the Super Bowl champions. Yeah. And, and on the other side of the ball, Andy, one win over Washington does not move the needle that much for me. The Bears no. still have lost 15 no. straight games mm-hmm. on Sunday and must win if the Vikings are going to save their season. So Justin Jefferson or not, the Vikings should win this game. I lay, I lay it on. I lay it on the Vikings I'm, two and a half. Give me the two and a half as well. I'm laying it on. Uh, Chicago is one of those teams that the books can't get around. They are two ten and one. Their last thirteen games, they yeah. cannot cover. They can't cover. And that line, they try to squeeze it in there. They brought it under three here. Doesn't matter. Bears will figure it out. They'll they will. Lose. They'll lose by more than that. That over under is at forty four and a half. Now, Chicago is one of those teams you're thinking, oh, they're so terrible, they're so bad. Yes, but they're worse on defense. Yes. It's an over bet. I'm telling you, five of the last five Chicago Bears games have all smacked the over. And, you know, Kirk is really going to want to shut the people up about, you know, Justin Jefferson not being on the field and everything. Mm-hmm. I believe that the Vikings are going to come out and score some points. They're yeah. going to get that run game going, yep. and then, they're like I said, they're going to use TJ Hawkinson in that red zone. I believe any time touchdown score for TJ Hawkinson mm-hmm. is a very good bet this week just because he's going to be without that uh, goal line threat in yeah. Justin Jefferson. So I really like TJ Hawkinson this week, and I really like the Vikings. we got a little bit of time here. I want to get your thoughts on kind of a sneaky play, a player yeah. prop. I don't know how I feel about it. I want to get your thoughts. DJ Moore yeah. went off last For week. For sure. I mean, touchdown after touchdown, big play after big play. Uh, his player prop receiving yards 55 and a half at a minus 115. If he doesn't get this, the Bears have no chance to win this game. Right. So I really do like this player prop. Uh, the, the Bears should be doing anything possible to get the ball into DJ Moore's <laughs> hands. Screens, slants, anything that they yeah. can do. Uh, you know, pass and goes, all this kind of stuff. So I do believe that you should take receptions over on DJ Moore and the yards over on DJ Moore. So I really like mm. those two plays uh, if, if the Bears have any chance of competing with the Minnesota Vikings. So I really do like DJ Moore because they need to get him the ball if they have a chance. He's just such a boomer bust type he of really player is. Th- this year. I mean, he's only gone over 100 yards receiving twice. Yep. And that's well, that's why it's average. so low, though. Yeah. That's why it's so low. So yep. uh, I-, I like Lightning to hit twice back-to-back weeks with DJ Moore. All righty. Well, you heard the horn there. That means we're up against it. But let's take a minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Nebraska Brewing Company. We've been enjoying the smooth, easy-drinking Ale Storm, the official beer of Omaha's AAA baseball team, crafted with Pilsner malt and sterling hops, making it the perfect summer baseball beer as we head into the fall. Nebraska Brewing Company, world-class in every glass. Don't go anywhere. This is WTL. And welcome back, everybody, to WTL, Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Class, and joined by Jabron, <laughs> the Parley Pounder. You got it. We're back. Yes, we are, and we are talking college football. CFB. We got some SEC schools yeah. coming your way here. We got a dandy of a little lineup here and let's start with an 11 o'clock kickoff over on ESPN. Yeah. The Arkansas Razorbacks are going to be playing the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama you know, they had that loss to Texas, and yeah. everyone's quick to jump off the ship. And what's going on in Tuscaloosa, this and that? <laughs> oh, we're going to fire this guy, that guy? Yeah. Oh, my God. They're 5-1, they're, they're and one, okay? Yeah, they're 5-1. and one. They're 5-1. and one. They're a 19.5-point favorite over Arkansas at yeah. home this week. Uh, I mean, <clears> come <throat> on. They're still ranked 11th in the nation. Yeah. And, and, yeah, that's 19.5. I'm seeing some books now at 20. So the lines are is expanding. And it will expand. Wow. It will. Um, yeah, I, I just think this is a it's a little bit strange just because it feels like both these teams are heading in different directions. Arkansas are piling up losses mm-hmm. f- the last four and Alabama yep. is finding ways to win. But this is not this is this is a lot of points, Andy. And uh all of Arkansas's losses have been decided by twelve or fewer points, yeah. I- including taking LSU and Ole Miss down to the wire on the road yes. like they have to do this week. Yes. So Alba Alabama doesn't have the horses offensively to blow teams out, and it's currently 88th in total offense in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Texas A&M had its chances last week to upset Alabama. Yes, they did. This is a lot of points. Give me the Razorbacks. That's that's too many touchdowns. I, I believe 
Arkansas does cover this. They'll lose, but they cover. Yeah, so the last five, five of six Western Division games yeah. in this conference, Arkansas has covered. And, and another thing to go along with, with what we're talking about here as far as the Razorbacks covering this 20-point spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's in Alabama. Um, but Alabama's uh, stud defensive back, Malachi Moore, is still on the injured list. Yes. Uh, he had a high ankle sprain last week against Texas A&M. Yep. Did not return. Um, on Wednesday, Nick Saban said he'll be a game-time decision. When you're talking high ankle sprain, uh, I'm saying probably Multiple not. Multiple weeks. And, and this isn't, like you are saying, this isn't the Alabama that can just reload, reload, reload. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not sending six defensive backs to the league this 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 time around. No. Probably only three. Yeah, probably three. only three. <laughs> and the other reason I, I kind of go with that, Andy, is that I think – uh, Alabama's going to get up by a couple touchdowns here and really pound the rock here. Uh-huh. They're averaging over 100, uh, right around 150 yards per contest on the ground. Uh, so I, I really believe that they probably just kind of pound the rock, yeah. at, let the game flow out. It is really, really fast game mm-hmm. and get out of there with a win. So I, I do believe that uh, Alabama wins by 10 or more, but not all the way up to 20. Not to 20. I mean, yeah, they could win by two touchdowns and a field goal and still not cover. Exactly. And I think that's probably where we're at with this game. All righty, so should we move on to a 2.30 kickoff on CBS? We are just talking about them, the Aggies, Texas A&M. Yeah. Heading on over to Tennessee to take on the 19th ranked Volunteers at Neyland Stadium. You ever been there? No, I haven't. I'd love to. I, I really would. I got to walk around the place. Uh, we were there um, um, for one of Ashley's uh, educational deals. Wow. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I got to go walk around the stadium. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, right there next to the river. Really cool setup. Would love to go to a game there. But Tennessee, uh, minus three. Three-point favorite here, 55-point total. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the the first thing you got to look at here, Andy, is Texas A&M, like we just said, coming mm-hmm. off a very hard-fought, frustrating loss to Alabama. They're and covering. you wonder how the players will respond with another tough road game yeah. this next week. The yeah. Tennessee Volunteers haven't lost a game at home in nearly two years, mm. and they're one of the most balanced teams in the country. Mm-hmm. That's ranked mm-hmm. 23rd in both in scoring offense and scoring defense. Yeah. Tennessee has also had an extra week to prepare for this game Ouch. with the bow- bye week last week. The line yeah. is being... This off is surprising me. I, I really got Tennessee maybe in a blowout here. Ooh. Give me the balls by a touchdown at home easily. And, and Tennessee is covering uh, 13 of the last 18 games, yeah, regardless yeah. of where it's played at home, this, that. They are covering. Um, so I like that, too. Joe Milton, the quarterback, already yeah. has over 1,000. 164 yards. Yep. Uh, Jalen Wright, the running back, already has 435 yards on the ground. Uh, it's They're a complete team. Aaron Beasley, that linebacker, the beast, he already has 33 tackles. <clears throat> exactly. And first round, first round, first round. First round, first round, first round. Jeez. And defensively for Tennessee is only allowing 17 points a game. Uh, they're, they're <laughs> A&M's going to have to score a lot more points than that to uh, be in this game and be close to four points. So, no, I got Tennessee in a landslide at home. I believe this is my be one of the locks of the week, Andy. So if you're going to get in on Tennessee, get it on it early because this line will spread. It, it'll it'll get up to at least three and a half, maybe four, at yeah. the by kickoff. Uh, what do you think of that total sitting at 55? Um, it's looking pretty good right now as far as the books are concerned. You're getting half the money coming in on the over, half the money coming in on the under, yeah. which is right where they want it. I, I, I like the over, Andy. Six of Tennessee's last seven home games against conference opponents have gone over the total point line, so I mm-hmm. really like that, especially if this is a blowout in Tennessee's way. I do believe it gets to this. Uh, yeah. Gets to this, and you know, they get up, you know, 30 five points or whatever okay. and then a and m gets a couple of those scores late to uh cover that over yeah you know and you, you do you feel bad for jimbo fisher not really i would never feel bad for him in the history of the world <laughs> i mean they're still four and two he lost a yeah, couple heartbreakers they're four and two almost yeah. beat alabama i don't feel sorry for him at all i mean everybody out here is you know crying like everybody's mm-hmm. like he's down on his luck he's down on his luck try yeah, losing yeah. 20 years in a row and then i'll talk to you <laughs> this guy i remember this guy winning national championships i i yeah. will never feel bad for him in the history of the world from this day forward uh and as of late the uh the old Aggies are not covering. They are one of six of the last seven games when they play on Saturday on the road. A little bit of a stretch there, but yeah. that's still, I mean, that goes in line with can they only lose by three? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not in Tennessee. No, not in Tennessee. And one other thing that I really want to point out here is, Andy, Texas A&M has lost each of its last 11 games as a road underdog. It's not going to It's gonna happen again. Yeah. They're going to get blown out of this one. I like the over, but I like that Volunteers line. 
Anywhere under a touchdown is gold. Ooh, you taking it all the way up to six and a half? For sure. Sitting at three right now? Get in on it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, have a little nightcap here over on Fox. Yeah, let's go. This one's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, we're getting out to the Pac-12 Why it's still around. The UCLA Bruins, soon to be uh, out of the Big Ten, they are 4-1, and one, doing really well. Chip Kelly's finally got it kind of going, I feel yeah. like. Oregon State, a little bit of a surprise team here. The got, Beavers. Got some transfers in there that are doing some big things. There. They are 5-1, and one, and they are just a couple plays away from being 6-0. and oh. This is in Corvallis, 7 o'clock kickoff, Riser Stadium, and the Beavers are a three-and-a-half point favorite here over the Bruins. I think that surprises a lot of people. Yeah, no, Andy, it really does. And like you said, both these teams are a play or a play and a half away from being six and zero yep. uh, on UCLA side, losing to Utah early in the season by seven points, and then over on the other side, yep. the the Beavers going into Washington State and losing by a field goal. So these are really good teams that these guys have played and lost to. Yeah. It's just uh, you know. The UCLA Bruins has had issues finishing drives this season as they are 63rd in scoring offense, Mm -hmm. and they were held to seven points in their last road game against Utah, like we were just saying. You know, but Utah, very good team. The Utes, very good team. The Oregon State Beavers, on the other hand, are a bounce team that are 14th in scoring offense and 35th in scoring defense. So that's pretty dang good for a Pac 12 team. Uh, Oregon State also has won seven straight games at home dating back to last season. Oregon State is legit. A lot of people, have them underrated, at, and I think they have a underrated home field advantage right here that a lot sure. of people don't give them to. So I'll lay it on the Beavers at home. Give me that. You, you like? I even, like the Beavers even with the hook there. I like it okay. with the hook. I, right. I, I got them by a touchdown. Yeah, and, and they defend home very well, and also they're nine and one the last ten games straight up. Yeah, for sure. You know, and if they're going to win and they're going to win at home, they can probably get them by a score. No, I think so, Andy. And Oregon State has won 14 of its last 15 at Riser Stadium, like you were just saying. Oregon State has also covered the spread in each of its last 10 home games against conference opponents. Ooh, like the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, yeah. The Beavers got it. Yeah, and, and DJ, one of the transfers that we talked about, the quarterback, Ungalengale. <laughs> Ungalengale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Clemson. I mean, people put him out to watch, like, yeah, get him out of here. He's terrible. I mean, he was, <laughs> he was doing national uh, Dr. Pepper commercials. For sure. You know, as soon as he came in for Trevor Lawrence, and it just didn't work out for him at Clemson, and he's found new life, and he's running with yeah. it. Yeah. Already over 1,300 yards Ooh. through the air this year for the Beavers. And you talk about that offense. Yeah. Damon Martinez, 586 yards on the ground. Man, that would be nice to have that on a on a team in the Big Ten. But, uh, yeah. Andy, what I'm really looking forward to here is this is a Pac-12 game. Yep. Are you looking at that over-under at all, sitting at 54 points right now? I'm looking at the 54 there, and you would think you could get to over. Oregon State <laughs> likes to pile it on for the last six games. Yes. They have smacked that over, and they're at home. They're against a, a high-profile game here, a couple of ranked teams, right? Yeah. So I— I kind of like the over, don't I? Yeah, like you said, six of Oregon State's last seven gone over the total point line. The other thing that I like about Oregon State is they start fast. Oregon State has won the first quarter in eight of its last nine games against conference opponents. Mm. They're going to get out. They're going to get going fast. And UCLA is going to have to play catch up. I believe it's going to be tit for tat until the end of the game where Oregon State gets up by a touchdown, covers that spread. That over is hitting two. You're taking the overs. You're taking over. Oregon State to cover that three and a half. For sure. It, it's all it's all gonna work out. The orange beavers. <laughs> they're gonna do it for us. Here we go. Corvallis Beavers. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, that should be a really fun game. It should regardless. be a lot of fun. Seven o'clock kick on Fox. Well, let's take a minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Stock and Rod Company, an outdoor lifestyle brand for those seeking adventure. Whether it's hunting, fishing, or hiking, they got you covered. Visit stockandrod.com to get your wild game on. Don't go anywhere. This is WTL. And welcome back, everybody, to WTL. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Klassen, joined by... Jabron. Oh, oh, <laughs> the Parley Pounder. You got it. You got it. Yes, yes, and we were talking a little college football. I think we need to talk more college football. A little more college football. A little more college football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, we actually have some pretty darn good matchups Yeah, there. these are really good. Uh, and some some really good teams, some fun teams to talk about, and some uh, intriguing betting lines to go along with that. Yeah, for sure, Andy, and a lot of unbeaten teams here as well. And that's where we're going to start. 
Oregon, yeah. the Ducks, are 5-0, and taking on the Washington Huskies. They're heading on over to Seattle there yeah. to take on the 5-0 and Huskies. <sighs> Huskies are a three-point favorite. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, because uh, Oregon, and rightfully so, they got a lot of pub. Yeah, yeah. Beating the snot out of <laughs> Colorado. For sure. Kind of feeding old Dion Prime his medicine there. Yep, yep. Um, they, they won the social media battle that Saturday. They did. They uh, won that, that Saturday. Hands down. Uh, but the Huskies have quietly put together maybe the best season thus far in college football. It's hard to argue. Yeah, Andy, and Washington should be a favorite at home here. It, it, you know, it's a it's a key edge in a massive Pac-12 contest yeah. that you know holds real serious playoff implications, Andy, because yeah. these two are you know fighting for that last spot as well. So, yeah. and heck, uh, Michael Penix is the Heisman betting favorite at many books. Uh, quarterback, right, quarterback, quarterback of, for Washington, yep. almost 2,000 yep. yards already, Andy, yeah. on the season. Uh, with all that said, I am still leaning with ducks. the Ducks. Uh, <laughs> you know, with a free field goal, I have to go with the Ducks here. As good as Washington is, it still can't run the ball, and its pass defense is really questionable, ranking 94th yep. in the country. Oregon is probably the most balanced offense in the country, and its defense has been a lot more consistent. Oregon has also been the more impressive team up to this point. So give me those points. I'm rolling with Bo Nick. Hey, and they are five and zero. They're also five and zero ATS Boom. against the spread. And they've had some wacky lines that they've had to overcome. For sure. It doesn't matter. Uh, I kind of get a kick out of their head coach and the moxie and how he kind of puts it out there in <laughs> kind of a clever way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as well, but this game is in Seattle. At, you know, at the stadium, it's a two thirty kickoff on ABC. Oregon is ranked eighth in the nation. Washington's ranked seventh in the nation. They're right there. It's so neck and it's neck. A, Andy. This is a this top is a, ten matchup. This is a Pac twelve brawl right now, Andy. The real reason that I'm really on Oregon right now, Washington has failed to cover the spread in 10 of its last 11 games Mm. as the favorite. So I do not like them being the favorite here, but you have to put them as the favorite. They're undefeated. It's at home. They're ranked seventh in the nation. There's no way that yeah. they can't be favored. And you talk about Penix and already almost having 2,000 yards. Yeah, for sure. Bo Nix isn't too far away. He's got over 1,400 <laughs> yeah, yards. Right. And let, let me. I'm just going to run down this. One, two, three, four. Four receivers rated right at 200 yards, and yeah. led by Tony Franklin with over 500 yards receiving already. <laughs> they got weapons all over they the freaking place. Uh, Bucky Irving already has almost 400 yards rushing. Yep. It's really hard to sh- – poke holes and anything uh, that that Oregon brings to the table. Here. Exactly. And they have covered the spread in 21 of last 24 games. They they wow. just covered. That's wow. all they do. Like you said, ATS, wow. the Ducks are there to stay. I'm going with the Ducks, especially getting points in this one, Andy. All righty. Okay. All right. Uh, did we talk about the, the total here? No, we have to. Yeah, we, we better because this is a Pac-12 game. Yep. <laughs> I'm looking at 67. That's that's where it is, Andy. In six of Washington's last seven games against top 15 opponents, Andy, yeah. at Husky Stadium have gone over. I think no this way. I think this what? is going over, Andy. Like you said, these are two of the Whoa. best two of the best quarterbacks in the nation. They are going to be mm. going for it. These are the Heisman hopefuls mm. right here going back and forth against two subpar to mediocre defenses. Very mediocre on Washington's side. I love the over. I just think it's going to be a shootout, Andy. <laughs> yeah. it, it might be, but five of uh, the last six Oregon Duck games have hit the under. Yes. And it's because you're talking, oh, what was that? The Colorado one was like 70, 73. 73. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I believe they brought this one a little bit back to earth, uh, but it's still a lot of points. It's still a lot of points, but this Washington team is a lot better than Colorado. I might sidestep it, but if I had to bet it, I would be all over that under. I, there you I go. Think, I think that defense can at least do that for me, right? <laughs> all right, let's get another ranked matchup okay. here. 630 over on NBC. That is yeah. right. Notre Dame is going to play host to USC, 10th ranked in the nation, Trojans. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame kind of licking their wounds here, aren't they? I guess not because they're favored. They're favored by two and a half is what I'm looking at. I was talking last segment about lock of the week with Tennessee. Uh This is the lock of the week. This is the lock lock. This is the lock lock of the week. (laughs) The Trojans are so money here. I I would go money line. You you don't even need these two and a half points. They are going to blow this Notre Dame team out. I guess Notre Dame is getting the benefit of the doubt just because it's a home rivalry spot, but 
being favored, it. especially after yeah. losing to Louisville last week, hey. is very strange. I think this line is so strange. It's out of whack. It should be seven points the other way. Whoa. USC should be a six-point favorite here. USC has defensive issues. It needs to fix, but the Trojans continue to find ways to win, and Notre Dame does not. Caleb Williams has been as advertised, right? For sure. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. He's stacking up yards through the air at a, at a clip that, you know, I don't know if Notre Dame can keep up with. Sam Hartman, too, is putting up some numbers. For sure. Really Very like good what he's been doing for, Very good for Notre Dame. Uh, he's got over 1,700 yards uh, through the air. Uh, you just think USC is too too much of a well-oiled machine. They have the best quarterback in the country, the best mm-hmm. scoring offense in college football. What one could argue with getting the free points in the better team is just crazy, but I'm all over this money line. I don't even care about the points. Give me that money line. Right. If you can find an alternate money line that gives you USC by a touchdown, go with that because they are blowing this team out. Notre Dame is on its last gasp. They are, they've already proved themselves twice that they cannot yeah. live up to the hype, especially against Caleb Williams in this riding high Trojans uh, offense. They, they were so close uh, in a couple of big games and just came up a little short and this and that and there's the refs and then yeah the and Louisville they're a ranked team right? The Cardinals, no. They're not bad. Uh, not, I mean, they're, they're not, not bad, bad, but they're not good. <laughs> okay. Uh, totals at 61 and a half. Yeah. Uh, and that that's going to be tough, Andy. I, I do believe yeah. that Notre Dame's defense is okay. Uh, probably a lot better than most of the Pac-12 defenses that sure. US, uh, USC has you know, seen thus far. Mm-hmm. I, I still think Caleb Williams dumps it on these guys, but I don't believe that overall will hit just because Notre Dame will try and keep it as close as they can. Yeah, that, that's going to be the recipe to success. But 13 the last 14 games for the Trojans have smacked that over. Yep. That That is what Caleb Williams and company do. Yeah. It, they put points up. It's crazy, Andy. Like you said, this guy has 1,800 yards, 22 touchdowns to the air, only one interception. Wow. How, many, how could like? you throw that many yards with only having that one interception in 22 touchdowns? Ugh. This guy is the real deal. Every team in the NFL is going to be, you know, hot off the press for this yep. guy. Uh, yeah, USC by a landslide in this one. You're getting free points. Lock it in. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take USC. <laughs> Jeez. Let's talk another night game here. Yeah. An ACC matchup, and this one's intriguing. This should be two unbeaten teams. Yes. But it's not. It's not. We're talking about Notre Dame coming off a hangover. How about the Miami Hurricanes? They are 4-1. and one. All I had to do was take a knee to beat Georgia Tech. Then the wheels came off. It was unbelievable. Now they got to regroup and head on out to the Fighting Mac Browns, take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. Tar Heels are 5-0. and They are on fire. They're ranked 12th in the nation. Miami's still ranked 25th in the nation. Yeah. Um, but it just it doesn't feel good. It does not feel good here. And the Tar Heels are a 3 and a half. Oh, I, most of the books I'm looking at now is at four. Yeah, it, it's going to go up, Andy. Uh, mo- you can probably still find it at three and a half, uh, maybe on Thursday here, uh, but it, it's probably going to get up mm. to four on Friday, Saturday, yeah. you know, four to five points. So uh, if you're on the Tar Heels, do it now. It kind of pains me, Andy, to see Mac Brown doing so well already yeah. down here with the Tar Heels. You know, yeah. a basketball school already turned around to one of the top 10 teams in the nation. Uh, But yeah, on the other side with Miami, that has to be the worst way that I've ever seen a team lose a game. All you have to do is take a knee you know, just yeah. just run out the clock. I mean, and it's Georgia Tech. Like, I don't know what you're trying to. I don't know what you're trying to prove. Right. You know, running up the gut against Georgia Tech, and that's all they're going to do is try to swipe at the ball. So, no, uh, yeah. that was very very sad to see. It wasn't very sad to see because you know yeah, it's, it's Miami. Miami and we're Nebraska. We're like, Nebraska. Lose fans, all you so want. Lose yeah. all you want. Yeah. Uh, no, I I really uh-huh. think the Tar Heels have a lot better team here, Andy. Yeah. Uh, they're at home. They're at home. It's one of the most. Explosive offenses in the country with above average defense. I lay it on with the Tar Heels. I'll t- I'll take this up to four for sure. You know, I was talking about the receivers uh, for Oregon. Drake May, the quarterback, trigger man there uh, yeah, for yeah. North Carolina. He has three receivers that are all there at over 280 yards receiving or more, led by Nate McCollum at 355 yards. And I mean, he's, and they're not just catching short balls here. Yeah, yeah. Over 12 yards, over 17 yards per reception. Uh, J.J. Jones is second leading receiver at 318 yards. He's averaging nearly 18 yards per reception. Whoa. I mean, this is this is an explosive. I think you said explosive offense. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, and uh, Miami, I think they got just too much going on, too much between the years here, yeah. uh, coming off a loss like that. This over-under is up there. It, it's 58, but I, I kind of— 
I might like that over. Yeah, no, I think the over is the way to go, Andy, especially, like you said, with North Carolina being, you know, such an explosive team. North Carolina has won the yep. first quarter in 12 of its last 15 games against conference opponents. That means they start fast yep. and they don't give up. So yep. I really like the over in this one, and I really like the Tar Heels. Yep, uh, the second coming of Mac Brown. Yeah, here they come. 5-0, uh, and oh, we're thinking they're going to move to 6-0, and oh, and not For only 6-0, sure. oh, we're thinking they're going to cover and go over. Book it. All right, let's take a minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, 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 partners. <laughs> that is the Nebraska Brewing Company. World class in every glass. Don't go anywhere. This is WTL. WTL. Gentlemen, it brings you to my next point. Don't smoke crack. WTL. And welcome back, everybody, to WTL. That stands for Where's the Line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Class, and joined by Jabron. <laughs> <laughs> Jabron, the Parlay Pounder. You got it. You got it. Mm. Talking about parlays, Andy. I think we might have one for the people at the end of this segment. What don't we have? Player props. We got parlays. <laughs> we got the Parlay Pounder. Exactly. And if you're listening to it last week, the Parlay did hit the three teamer the Eagles, the Bengals, the 49ers. We called all three. Oh my God. We won you some money. There Stay tuned for that parlay at the end of this segment. There we go. There we go. I love it. So, yeah, a little teaser to start with. Uh, is that starting faster? We're getting a fast start here. Let's get a fast start. <laughs> We're going to start with the afternoon kickoff here. Yeah. The Philadelphia Eagles are heading on out to the Meadowlands to take <clears throat> on the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets. <clears throat> Oh, man, that's a 325 kickoff yeah. on Fox. And the Jets, even though they're at home, they are a full touchdown dog. A seven-point square on the key number. Yeah. Dog. Yeah, Andy. I, and I'm sticking with the Eagles until they give me a reason not to, Andy. The Jets yeah. got the win over Denver, but look at the state of the Broncos' defense. Giving mm. up 70 points to Miami, 31 to the Jets. I mean, it's a bad look over at the Broncos, yeah. as we mentioned in the earlier segment. The Eagles have been able to get the job done all season long, yeah. and I look for this game to be no different. As the defense shuts down the Jets, give me the Eagles laying with the points. Uh, in recent history, when the Eagles and New York Jets play, yeah. it's been all Eagles. You're talking straight up. You're talking ATS. Yeah, six and zero ATS last six games. Ten and zero last ten games against the Jets. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, if it's in Philadelphia, if it's in New York or New Jersey. Um, the Eagles cover. They 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 beat them and they cover. Yeah, Andy, and it, 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 they just have the better team here. Yeah. Eagles are riding high for an NFC Championship yeah. matchup with the San Francisco 49ers, I believe. Yeah. And th this is not a gotcha game. It, it really isn't. Yeah. Uh, the Jets might have a little bit of you know false security there, beating the Broncos, but it, they're going to get shoved yeah. down real quick in this one. And and I like Zach Wilson. I think he uh, catches a lot of shade when he doesn't deserve it. Yeah, yeah. He's playing better. Uh, but this Philadelphia, this might, you know, you talk about San Francisco, but this might have the most complete roster, offense, defense, special teams. I mean, we're, the Eagles are just the cream of the crop right now. Yeah, Andy, I, I just, they, they're they're a Super Bowl favorite yeah. along with the San Francisco 49ers coming out of the NFC. You got a player prop for this one? Yeah, I do, Andy, and a little reasoning behind it. Jalen Hurts has recorded over 277 passing yards in four of the Eagles' last five games following a win, which has been the last five, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, in, in his line right now on DraftKings is over under 223.5. I really believe that he gets over this. Okay. Uh, I, I believe it's yeah. a lock. I really do like that. <laughs> yeah, the 2-3 and three Jets. Um, you know, they don't have Aaron Rodgers, all that stuff. We know about that. The Eagles are 5-0, and and they are flying high, and they are flying on to take the Jets. Yeah, Andy, and if you're on Zach Wilson, like you said, you know, we're not trying to beat a you know, dead horse or anything, but Zach Wilson has recorded over 210 passing yards in each of his four uh, previous games at home. So yeah, yeah. his line is sitting right there at uh, 194. So huh. I wouldn't mind that as well because they are going to be down. He is going to be throwing. So yeah. I do like over yep. 200 yards for Zach Wilson in the air as well. And it does kind of feel like uh, one of those prototypical games where uh, Philadelphia is going to establish themselves. They'll take the lead and then they'll they'll have it secured in the fourth quarter and then yeah. they'll take their foot off the gas. And then it's Zach Wilson time and he needs the snaps. He needs the all of it. You yeah. Know? yeah. He's going to be throwing it. He needs the experience. All those things. I agree. Let's stay in New York. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about another couple of teams in New York, playing in New York. That is the New York Giants, only one and four, heading on up to Buffalo to take on the Bills, who are surprisingly only at three and two, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. The Buffalo Bills are a two touchdown favorite. 14 points just square on that key number. Yeah, that's crazy, Andy. And, you know, I think I have to stay with Buffalo here. Buffalo uh, really needs, you know, <laughs> they they really need a bounce back effort to get themselves, you know, back where they need to be. I mean, play the Giants. You got to play the Giants. <laughs> Buffalo has, <laughs> you know, man, the books can't catch up to the Giants. Uh, no matter how bad they play, no matter what they do, yeah. they are zero and six against the spread. And you're seeing lines like this: a two touchdown. This is the league. This is the NFL, and we're talking about a, a team of professionals, paid professionals, to lose by two touchdowns. Yeah, the only thing that I can't get on board with just the Giants, Andy. They rank thirty second in the NFL in yards per game with two hundred and fifty five yards, mm. and the Giants rank thirty two in the NFL. In a lot of categories across the books on the <laughs> offensive side of the ball, it's so crazy. And uh, the Bills yeah. rank number one in sacks. The the Bills rank number one in interceptions. Yeah. I, I just believe the Bill. This is ripe for a Bills blowout. And I believe back. it. I believe Man. it's by more than two touchdowns. Yeah. I just can't get behind anything with the Giants just yeah. because they stink. Uh, and this Tyre, is a Sunday night game. Sunday night game, prime NBC. time. Josh Allen yep. needs to be bright lights. Yep. Daniel Jones is not playing. Tyrod Taylor is taking the start for Ooh. the Giants, okay. which, I, yeah, which way does I, I that think, go? I think yeah. he might he might be just as good as Daniel Jones, yeah. but I, I'm yeah. not I'm not betting on it. It kind of sounds like with all those 32nd ranked in this, 32nd ranked in that, is there any player props you're looking at? I mean, there are some player props, Andy, that, and it's all Josh Allen to me. It's all Josh <laughs> Allen to me. Uh, seven in the last ten games that these two teams have scored off, the under is hit, and it's in at 44 and a half. So you got to be feeling over there. Yeah. I mean, if you're that high on Josh Allen and all these things, you got to be thinking that he's going to cover that. It, exactly, Andy. That's what I was talking about. Is is over under sitting at 265 yards? Mm-hmm. I believe he goes well over three in this game. Yeah. Uh, Stephon Diggs is going to want the ball. Uh, they're going to get those two tight ends in the in the yep. mix there. Yep. Uh, Gabe Davis has been a really uptick in receptions the last couple weeks, so I really like Josh Allen over 265 and a half yards. Book it. I like that too. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. This this does feel like one of those games where he's going to have over 300 yards, three touchdowns, all the things. Yeah. Sunday night, he just hits another gear when all the lights are on. And this just feels like one of those games where they've they've already done it this year. Yeah. They'll lay an egg, and then they'll explode, right? (laughs) So should we move on to Monday night? Let's do it. A a little closer game. Yeah. Uh, But this this is curious here. The Dallas Cowboys didn't have a good outing uh, last week. They ran into the best team in the NFL, in my oh, assumption. Doug, Doug Duda, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I know you're a Cowboys guy, but oh boy. And then Dak, you know, Dak, where are you at, my man? Come on. Ooh. So they're heading on out to L.A., playing SoFi Stadium, take on the Chargers, and the Chargers are a two-and-a-half-point dog. Yeah. After Dallas looked like that on the road— they're still a two and a half point favorite. Yeah, and Monday night, and, and I know the Chargers don't necessarily have the biggest home field advantage, and the Cowboys fans always travel well. Sure, but I'm still not sold on this Cowboys team in general. Oh, man. I mean, you have you have guys like Ceedee Lamb calling out for their efforts in press conferences. Dak Prescott was doing, like you said, Dak Prescott things against the Niners, handling the ball to the other, handing the ball to the other team <laughs> pr- practically. Was, I'm high yeah. on the Chargers, and I think they get a big win here. Cover, Ooh. give me the Chargers. I like the money line, Andy. You like the money line here. Well, you might as well. I mean, if you're if you're looking at the Chargers, take that money line. Exactly. I, and Herbert's he's he, I don't think he's had the season everyone thinks that he's I mean, I think he was what, he's like thirteenth, twelfth yeah. as far as uh QBR rating and, and passing yards and in, in the NFL. So like he, he it's not like he's a world beater or lighting it on fire and all no. that other stuff here. And and that's why they're a dog at home to a team that's struggling. For sure. For sure, and, and like you said, they they are kind of both teams are struggling right now. It's just that the Dallas Cowboys, I don't don't think they have an identity as a team mm-hmm. yet, mm-hmm. And, and you know they're trying to hang their hat on their defense or whatever. And San Francisco Forty Nine ers just 
took it to him. Yeah. George Kittle three touchdowns last week. McCaffrey yeah. got in for his you know 60th game in a row or yeah. whatever you want to call it. Uh, player prop I'm really looking at here, Andy, is Justin Herbert over one and a half touchdowns at a minus 160. I okay. believe it's a lock. Okay. Keenan Allen's been one of the best receivers in football this this year, and I believe he finds him for two scores, if not more. So I really like Justin Herbert over one and a half touchdowns. Okay. All right. I I, I think I, I think I do like that. Uh, and this line has some volatility to it. Now yeah. I'm seeing a lot of twos come in. So the line is cam- coming back yeah, down yeah, yeah, yeah. in that direction that you're talking about right there. For sure. I already lost the hook. It, exactly. And that and that's the reason why that I'm looking at money line, Andy, because if, yeah. if, if you're going to bet two, might as well get the extra juice with the plus money with the money line. There we go. Over under sitting at 51. Woo! I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that either, Dallas Andy. Dallas has been smacking that under much too often for me to like it, this. Exactly. Exactly. Their defense is very good, and their offense their offense can't score points. Even if the Chargers do get you know three or four touchdowns, yeah. can the Cowboys combat with that? It doesn't seem like they can. Yeah. I would back the under in this game as well. Yeah, you know, after listening to you, I'm really looking at the Chargers here. I haven't made up my mind on this one. I I think the best bet might be that player prop. Yeah, Herbert, right? I, Two I touchdowns think so too, Andy. One I and really a half. Do. Over one and a half touchdowns, and a minus one sixty. He's got that. I, I think he's, he's got, got that, that no matter what. Yep. All right, Mr. Parlay Pounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a parlay play for the people? Exactly. And I'm sticking with the three-teamer, Andy. We hit it last week. I think I have a really good Uh shot at going two for two here. Uh, Three for three if you're talking about this three-teamer. I got the Las Vegas Raiders at home against the New England Patriots. New England Patriots have not been able to move the ball. Mm -mm. Very disrespectful team to that Belichick era. Coming into Las Vegas, I believe the Vegas Raiders got you know, kind of, kind of momentum going with that Packers win on Monday night. Uh-huh. So yeah. I like the Packers. Uh, I like the Raiders money line at minus one fifty five. I got Detroit going into Tampa Bay. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown coming back. I believe that gives them a little extra juice to get over the Buccaneers okay. money line. And then I got the Philadelphia Eagles betting that down to six and a half over the New York Jets. So I got the Raiders money line, Detroit money line, Eagles minus six and a half. Putting twenty five dollars on this to win ninety five. Okay, all right, and you got you, you actually have a couple of minus money there, so people exactly. just need to hold court, right? Just all do you got to do, do is do what you're hold court. To do. Just hold court. Do what you're supposed to do. Yep. You heard the horn. That means uh, we're running out of time here. So that'll about do it for us this week, folks. Be sure to follow us on ESPN Tri Cities Radio on their Facebook page. We're getting a lot of really good interaction on oh, there. Oh yeah, putting some short videos out. Also, our Twitter account starting to grow along with our YouTube channel and those YouTube shorts. Yes. I had one go off for over 10,000 views. I, that's maybe not too big for a lot of places, but it's big for us. Thank you, Swifties. Thank you, Swifties. <laughs> the Swifties <laughs> keeping the, the NFL afloat here. Yeah. And helping out WTL anyway on the social media front for sure. And we appreciate each and every one of you that watch these yes. videos, that subscribe, that leave us comments. We really do. It helps the channel grow. It helps us grow. So once again, thank you to everybody uh, that partakes uh, in WTL in the virtual world, the web, whatever the you want to call it. The social media world. The social media world. Speaking of which, you do handle the TikTok. Yeah. Daily free picks if those, for you, those of you that want to get on TikTok and yeah, follow yeah, us. Yeah. For Joe Braun, the par lay pounder. I'm Andy Klassen. Thank you for listening. This has been WTL.